Is Ty and Anthony a lock for Syracuse? You are locked on Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome into Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Holzer, and thank you for making us your first listen of every single day here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day, and we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And on today's show, I am giving you guys the latest updates regarding Kai and Anthony, and if Syracuse is a lock to land the 2025 four-star guard, he would be the third player in Syracuse's 2025 class. He recently released his top three. Syracuse made it alongside USC and Auburn. So we're going to break it all down here on today's podcast. And this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. So I did an update just a couple of days ago, a football and basketball recruiting update. That's what it was. I gave you the latest with everything. Obviously, football getting Demetrius Samuel back was a big deal. And then Syracuse basketball getting its second commit in the 2025 class and Aaron Womack. And then I gave a little bit of, you know, wait, wait, what's going on with Kyan Anthony and Tyler Jackson, Shauna Baez, Sadiq White, etc. And then, of course, that podcast premieres at 6 p.m. Eastern. And, well, right around that time, Kyan Anthony released his top three. So we have another recruiting update for you guys here on today's podcast so the big news Kyan Anthony a 2025 consensus four-star guard we've talked about him a lot here on this channel has announced his top three schools and to really nobody's surprise Syracuse is in his top three the other two schools are USC and Auburn now Kyan Anthony originally had a top six that was released just a couple of months ago, and he eliminated Florida State, Ohio State, and Rutgers from that list. And I think a lot of people are kind of happy that Rutgers is no longer in contention because that's a Northeast school. And it really would have been a bummer to lose out on Kyan Anthony to a Northeast school, but I think it would be a bummer to miss out on Kyan Anthony in general. But still, I think people are kind of happy because North or Rutgers is a Northeast rival. That's besides the point. Now, Kyan is expected to make his decision this fall. So that could be later this month. That could be in November as well. So just keep an eye on that as to when he's going to announce his decision date. And obviously, I will update you guys when we have one regarding that. Kyan Anthony, according to On3, is considered to be one of the best pure scorers in the class of 2025. He's not exactly like his father, Carmelo Anthony, but you know, Carmelo Anthony was a pretty good pure scorer in his own right in fact he's a he's, he's gonna if he's not in the basketball hall of fame right now it's only because of eligibility purposes but he will be in the basketball hall of fame and most if not all reports out there from all the top experts are indicating that Syracuse is the strong favorite to land Kyan Anthony all right we're gonna get to USC and Auburn later in this podcast because while I teased at the top that is Syracuse a lock while they are considered the strong favorite I would not say it is a complete done deal to land Kyan Anthony. Also, Kyan is the number one player overall in the state of New York and a consensus top 50 prospect overall in the country. I think he his range is anywhere between 30 and 48. So he is an elite prospect no matter what recruiting service you prefer to use. Now, here is the Syracuse connection. All right. Kyan Anthony... He is the son of Syracuse legend Carmelo Anthony. Carmelo Anthony in 2003 was the number one overall freshman in the country coming in, and he led Syracuse to its only national title in 2003, uh, ended up becoming the number three overall pick in that year's draft alongside LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh. And Carmelo Anthony had a Hall of Fame caliber career. As I said, if he's not in the Hall of Fame right now, he will be pretty soon. Carmelo Anthony, one of the best pure scorers of our generation. Now, Kyan Anthony, as far as visiting Syracuse, he officially visited the Orange last October. So that was about a year ago from right now. And he also, he also recently had an in-home visit with the Syracuse coaching staff. So obviously, the Orange are making this kid 
a top priority. And hey, because of the legacy of Carmelo Anthony and Kyan Anthony's stature overall as a prospect, he's been on campus probably a million times in his life. Let's just be honest, all right? That may be unofficially, of course, but there's a very obvious connection here. So what is the appeal for Syracuse regarding Kyan Anthony? All right, because I'm going to talk about it with USC. I'm also going to talk about it with Auburn, right? With Syracuse, first and foremost, it is the comfort factor. It's the legacy factor. As I said, this is someone who has been in Syracuse's locker room when he was a very little kid. All right? He has been on this campus a million times. His dad's name is, is on a building at Syracuse, the Mellow Center, right? So there is an obvious comfort level. You're obviously not far from home either. Syracuse, New York, he is from New York. There's the comfort and there's the legacy factor, right? Now let's talk about basketball-wise because basketball-wise, it has to matter. Well, Syracuse, we're, we're an ACC program. ACC basketball is looked at a little bit differently than ACC football, right? ACC football kind of, even though maybe it shouldn't, it kind of gets kicked to the curb a little bit, at least nationally perception, right? But in basketball, ACC is still one of the premier conferences in college basketball. I know a lot of people like to downgrade the ACC, but come tournament time, I mean, all these ACC teams start winning. I don't think it's a coincidence, and it's just—it's not just Duke and North Carolina every year. It's pretty much every single team. We just saw NC State make the Final Four as an 11 seed. We saw Clemson as a 6 seed last year, I want to say, make the Elite Eight. Syracuse, last time they made the tournament, was an 11 seed. They went to the Sweet 16, and other times we have seen Syracuse as a low seed make the Final Four. They were a 10 seed in 2016. They made the Final Four. So the ACC, to my point, is a premier conference in college basketball. You are going up against the top players overall in the country at Syracuse. And also, the Orange, in, in my opinion, and maybe I'm just a homer, right? I, I mean, I am a homer. I'm a self-admitted homer when it comes to Syracuse. I, I am fair with the program, but I am kind of a homer. We are in my opinion, on a little bit of an upswing. Fair to say? I think this program is on the upswing because last season, it was Adrian Autry's first year, and this team won 20 games in the regular season. They didn't make the tournament. For the third straight year, they didn't make the tournament, but for the first time in 10 years, this team won 20 games in the regular season. So in my opinion, this program is on the come up and the vibes seem to be pretty good around the program now compared to what it was a year ago or two years ago or three years ago. I think Syracuse this season is poised to get back into the tournament. And I'll be honest with you guys, because of when Kai and Anthony is expecting to make a decision, I don't know if this season is really going to matter all too much regarding his decision, right? Because he, he plans on making it in November. The season starts in November. It's not, it's not like he's waiting until March, right? But overall, I would say that this program is more on the upswing. And so obviously there is appeal for Syracuse basketball. I think if we were really down in the dumps as a program, even though there is the legacy and the comfort, we wouldn't have much of a shot. But Syracuse, I wouldn't consider the program back. I wouldn't consider them back yet to where they once were, but they are on more of an upswing than they have been in years past because Adrian Autry in his first season, I thought handled himself really, really well. So that is the Syracuse angle of this. And once again, Kyan and Anthony, the big news just released the other day. He told on threes, Joe Tipton, that he has cut down his list of schools to three Syracuse, USC, and Auburn. We just talked about the Syracuse angles. Now coming up, we're going to talk about the angles from the other schools, starting with USC. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. And you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. And for Syracuse football fans out there, I know this is a basketball recruiting update, but let's talk about Syracuse football for a second because they're facing UNLV Tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern in the Orange for the second time this year 
They are underdogs. Syracuse is a six and a half point dog to UNLV and their money line. Now it's, it's gone down a little bit. They were at plus 188, but now when I just checked FanDuel, they are plus 184. Will Syracuse cover or better yet win outright, right? They, they just beat Georgia Tech as an underdog a few weeks ago. Why not win outright, right? Why not Syracuse, right? We can beat UNLV, I think. Well, you can decide that for yourself on FanDuel. That's FanDuel.com. Once again, from everything out there, Syracuse seems to be the prohibitive favorite to land. 2025, four-star guard, Kyan Anthony. Bring Kyan Anthony home back to Syracuse. But Kyan Anthony released a top three. Not a top one, a top three. That means there are two other schools that are competing with Syracuse, USC and Auburn. And so, not to scare you guys, not to say that Syracuse isn't going to land Kai and Anthony. That's not what this is about. But let's let's look at this from a USC standpoint and why they may have a shot at landing Kai and Anthony, or better yet, just stealing him away from Syracuse. It's kind of a, a roundabout connection right here, so you're going to have to Follow with me on this one, all right? I'm going to try to slow it down for you guys so you can understand it. So let's start off with some housekeeping. Kai and Anthony officially visited USC's campus last weekend. Let's talk about Los Angeles. Los Angeles is a glamour city. USC is in Los Angeles. Los Angeles versus Syracuse. I mean, I've been to Syracuse. I've been to Los Angeles. Look, I, I have a special place in my heart with Syracuse, all right? But come on, it's L.A. It's L.A., a glamour city, right? One of the glamour cities across the United States, right? You think of New York City and L.A. That's pretty much what it is. Those are the main two glamour cities in this country. Having said that, here's really the real connection, all right? Forget the, forget the geography aspect of it, because at the end of the day, Kai and Anthony is from New York. And it's still all the way on the West Coast if you were to attend. In case you don't know, and it is public knowledge that I am about to say, but in case you don't know, Carmelo Anthony and LeBron James are very, very close friends. Now, you might be asking yourself, why is why am I mentioning that? Why is that important to this discussion? Well, here's where the roundabout connection comes. So LeBron James, he's signed with the LA Lakers in the summer of 2018, and he has been there ever since signing with the Lakers. Well, guess where his son, Bronny James, attended school? Just take a guess. Where do you think? You guys probably know the answer. There was a ton of hype for it last year. I see a lot of people comparing the Kyan and Anthony to Bronny James in the hype level. Bronny, look, I love Kyan Anthony. I love Carmelo Anthony. Bronny James had a lot more hype because LeBron James is that big of a deal in this country and around the world. Aside from that, though, Bronny James went to USC. How about that? He went to USC. Now, am I going to sit here and say that, hey, Kyan Anthony is going to follow in the same footsteps and, and do just what Bronny James did? Not necessarily, but that's where the connection comes from. That That's where it is. Understand that? Once again, LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony are very, very close. They are very tight. That is public knowledge. We all know the banana boat squad. If you don't know that, look it up, all right? LeBron James's kid, Bronny James, a top prospect in last year's recruiting cycle, now with the LA Lakers, that's going to be a fun one, chose to go to USC. So could Kai and Anthony perhaps follow in the same footsteps as a Bronny James and go to USC? It's a roundabout connection. You can take it for what it's worth, but that is what it's out there. And obviously USC is, is in Los Angeles, a, a glamour city. If, if that's maybe something that Kai and is looking for, then USC would be the perfect spot for him. All right, so yes, Syracuse again. Every report out there is considering Syracuse the heavy favorite to land Kyan Anthony. But there are two other schools that we have to consider 
And so I am giving you the angles or giving you my best guess as to why those schools are still in the running for Kai and Anthony. Look, Bronny James, a lot of people thought he would go to Ohio State. Why? Because LeBron, his dad, is, is from Ohio. Obviously, he was in Cleveland for many years. He was in he was with the Cavaliers. If he were to have attended college, he probably would have gone to Ohio State. So a lot of people had that connection with Bronny, and he ended up going to USC because, well, it was also home. That makes sense. But there is a connection with Kai and Anthony and USC. It is just a little bit of a roundabout one, all right? And also, I probably should have mentioned this off the top, so I apologize. But Kai and Anthony's father, Carmelo Anthony, we've talked about him, right? Obviously, you guys probably know him since you're watching or listening to this podcast. Carmelo, his father, he's not pressuring him to pick any school. He's not saying you got to go to Syracuse. He's not saying you got to go to USC. He's basically letting Kai and Anthony make the best decision for himself. All right. So Kai and Anthony is going to make his own mind. Syracuse is still heavily favored, but we have to look at it from the other school's perspective as well. So that is USC. Now coming up, we're going to talk about why Auburn may have a chance at landing Kai and Anthony. This one is interesting. Why Kai and Anthony and Auburn could be a fit, all right? With USC, there's a roundabout connection. With Auburn, it's more direct, but at the same time, it's a little bit weird. So once again, you're going to have to kind of hear me out on this one, and I'm going to try to speak slowly so that you can understand me, all right? Auburn has been in the race for Kai and Anthony for quite a while, for, for a long, long time. So it's not surprising necessarily that Auburn is in the final three. It's the fashion that they are in the final three. Because according to Kai and Anthony himself, Auburn actually hasn't even offered him a scholarship yet. They haven't even sent him an offer. So Kai and Anthony has not even officially visited Auburn. Now, he may have taken an unofficial visit to the campus, but I don't know that for a fact to my knowledge, all right? I tried to look that up. I couldn't find it. If you guys can, well, more power to you. But what I do know is that Kai and Anthony has not officially visited the Auburn campus in large part because, well, he doesn't have a scholarship offer from them. So I kind of find that a little bit weird, why a team that hasn't offered him a full scholarship is in his top three. It's, it's kind of interesting, right? But I'll get to the connection soon. All right. He also told Adam Zagoria and Sam Lance at zagsblog.com. I had Sam Lance on the podcast over the summer. He hasn't even had really any deep conversations with Auburn's head coach, Bruce Pearl. You'd think that if this was a top priority for your school, that you would want the head coach and the prospect to have a close relationship. Not to say that they have a poor relationship or anything like that, but from Kai and Anthony's words, it doesn't seem like they have too big of a connection, right? Coach Autry and Kai and Anthony, by all the reports out there, are tight. They have been talking nonstop. But with Auburn, Bruce Pearl doesn't, doesn't seem to be the case, okay? Now, he does have a deep relationship with assistant coach Ira Bowman, but again, if you're really strongly going after a kid, you would want the head coach to... You'd think at least you'd want the head coach to have a deep connection with the prospect. However, this is where we get to the kicker. Why would Auburn be in the top three? Because everything I just said would basically prove that Auburn shouldn't be in the top three. Well, here we go. Do you remember over the summer? And once again, I'm mentioning that Sam Lance was on the podcast. Well, one of the main reasons he was on the podcast, not just because he's a fantastic recruiting expert, was because he reported or and he interviewed Tyler Jackson, a four-star guard who Syracuse is going after, that Tyler Jackson and Kyan Anthony were considering possibly teaming up together in college. They're teammates right now in high school. They were thinking about, hey, why not become teammates again in college? And a lot of people speculated that, hey, well, that would be Syracuse. And I think they actually mentioned Syracuse by name in the quote from Tyler Jackson. Well, Auburn might be trying to do the same thing. 
Okay. Auburn might be trying to do the same thing. And I apologize for looking down here, but I just want to make sure that my notes are correct or my notes are correct, but I want to make sure what I'm saying is factually correct based on what I have been reading online. So Auburn is also in contact, according to zagsblog.com, with four star guard Tyler Jackson, someone who Syracuse is obviously in contact with. So what I am going to infer, and this is me making, I am make this is an opinion, okay? This is not fact. This is when we get off the facts a little. Because they're talking with Tyler Jackson and they are talking with Kyan Anthony, I am going to infer that Auburn has a pretty similar idea to what we think Syracuse does is, hey, let's get Kyan Anthony and Tyler Jackson on the same team in college. So that might be why Auburn has a shot at landing Kyan Anthony. Again, it's weird because he doesn't have an offer from them. He's not officially visited the campus yet. He doesn't have a super close relationship as of right now with the head coach, Bruce Pearl, there. He does with the assistant coach. But the fact that Auburn is also talking to Tyler Jackson, the four-star guard, makes me believe that they are thinking about possibly getting Kyan Anthony and Tyler Jackson together. And that would obviously rip our hearts out as Syracuse fans because we want that for ourselves. So that's why Auburn might have a chance. All right. So once again, we gave the Syracuse perspective. We gave the USC perspective, right? The LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony, Bronny James, Kyan Anthony, right? All the all the Anthonys and Jameses together with USC. And we just gave the Auburn perspective as to why they might have a chance at landing Kyan Anthony. Once again, I would like to reiterate that pretty much every report out there from all the top experts is saying that Syracuse is the leader in the clubhouse. They are the strong favorite to land Kyan Anthony as of, well, I'm recording this on October 2nd, but this will be released on October 3rd. And I already know now that because I'm recording this a day in advance, that we're going to find out even more news regarding Kyan Anthony that, hey, he probably just already announced his decision date. That's just me making a joke. He has not, as of right now, announced a decision date. All right. Now, overall, in Syracuse basketball's 2025 class, they still have five-star forward Sadiq White. So that's one right there. That was obviously a big-time recruit. I believe it happened in late May, and nothing has changed regarding his commitment status. The only thing that has changed with Sadiq White is that he transferred high schools. He's now at IMG Academy. I'm sure he is going to thrive there. Donnie Freeman, Syracuse's top prospect in 2024, did the same thing, and he elevated his stock. So... Hey, going to IMG Academy for Sadiq White, it might make him even better. He's already top 15 over on ESPN. Of course, a couple of days ago when I gave you guys the latest recruiting update before, uh, Syracuse got three-star forward Aaron Womack. So that's two players in the class of 2025. And here's why, honestly, why getting Kyan Anthony would be awesome. It's not just because of the nostalgia or the the legacy, he's home. It's not just because of that. Obviously, that's a big factor. That's huge. And from an optics standpoint, if they can land Kai and Anthony, that would be a huge boost to the program. He's also a great player, right? This is somewhere this is someone ranked between 30 and 48 on any recruiting service that you check out. Not only that, you're getting a great player, nostalgia, one of the top scorers in the class of 2025, according to On3. But also, he would give Syracuse its third player in the class of 2025. I think we'd all sign for three. Three is pretty good. And obviously, in basketball, it's a little bit different than football. In football, you're looking for, obviously, you want quality, but... You would probably rather a a 30-player class like Syracuse football has right now. They just got another commit in the class of 2025 with maybe one four-star in it than a 20-player class with three four-stars in it and 17 three-stars, right? Because you want that quality. You need players. It's football. Injuries happen all the time. You need someone to replace. You need the next man up. In basketball, it's a little bit different. 
right? I, I think you would rather have two five-star prospects than maybe four four-star prospects. It's a little bit different. But if Syracuse were to land Kai and Anthony, that would be their third player in the class. They would have a five-star in Sadiq White, a four-star in Kai and Anthony, and a three-star in Aaron Womack. And hey, the Orange are still in the running for a few more prospects. Tyler Jackson, maybe there is that Auburn connection there, right? But Syracuse is still in contention for him as of this moment, I think. Maybe you can land him too and pair Kai and Anthony, Tyler Jackson together. That would be four. And you also got to keep an eye on four stars, Sean Abayev and Asher Elson. Am I going to sit here and tell you guys that Syracuse is going to have a six-player class? They probably are not going to have a six-player class. That would be a dream if they can land pretty much everyone that I just named. But at the same time, I know we have seen a lot of prospects like Derek Dixon go out elsewhere, uh, Ryder Frost go elsewhere, Keyshawn Tillery go elsewhere. And it's a bummer because you obviously want them to commit to Syracuse, but the dream is not over yet. Syracuse can still have a pretty deep 2025 class. If I had to guess, I think it'll be at four. I think Syracuse will secure the deal for Kai and Anthony. And if they want Tyler Jackson bad enough, they will probably get him too if they can land Kai and Anthony. So that's where we are at with Syracuse basketball recruiting, but more specifically, Kai and Anthony. Once again, Kai and Anthony released his top three. Syracuse, unsurprisingly, made the final three for him alongside USC and Auburn and when I have another update on Kai and Anthony, I will be sure to let you guys know. Now, coming up on the podcast tomorrow, I'm going to give you guys the keys for Syracuse football to beating UNLV and also give you guys my prediction as to whether or not Syracuse will actually upset UNLV. That is Poll Friday, of course. It's only going to be about a 10 to 12 minute episode, right? Poll Fridays. Now, Poll Friday will be out earlier in the day. And the reason why is because, well, in case you don't know, now you know, Syracuse football is taking on UNLV tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern. So I'm going to want to get that poll Friday out as soon as possible on Friday so you guys can watch it, listen to it, consume it how you want, and then watch the game and all that fun stuff. And hopefully Syracuse football can get its second ranked win of the season. Thank you for making Locked On Syracuse your first listen today. For your second listen, check out the Locked On ACC podcast. Alex Dono and Kenton Gibbs, they, they keep it real, and they also bring you the truth, whether you want to hear it or not, where your ACC team stands, more specifically Syracuse, within the conference. And also, hey, Locked On, or not Locked On, Locked On ACC squad episodes as well. Those are awesome. You can find it on that channel. You can find it on my channel, right? Find Locked On ACC on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts.